So why methanogens? First off, methanogens can be ideal candidates for life on Mars, as well as other bodies in the solar system. Um, the four strains we use in our lab are listed down here. And um, like Lucy said earlier, all of our methanogens utilize only carbon dioxide as um, a carbon source and hydrogen as an energy source. And so they're anaerobic, which would be nice on Mars. Also, they're non-photosynthetic, so that means they could live under the subsurface. And finally, methanogens were, um, arose early on Earth, and so if Mars had a similar uh, early history, perhaps they happen to arise on Mars as well. So these are the four strains we use in our lab, but in this experiment we only used um, Methanothermobacter wolfii and Methanobacterium formicicum. So we did um, a freeze-thaw experiment, and we wanted to um, approach mimicking Mars temperature conditions. And so these are just two charts from Curiosity at Gale Crater. And the first, the top chart shows um, daily temperature uh, minimum and maximum in the air um, from late winter to late spring, or about one, ha um, one fourth of the Martian year. And so you can see that at late winter, temperatures don't really get above um, zero degrees, and they go down to about negative 80 Celsius, whereas in the late spring, temperatures can rise a tiny bit above zero, and um, there's not as much variation there. And so we use this data for our initial experiments. Um, yesterday's talk by Brandon Stackhouse provided a good introduction to thaw features on Mars. And so um, this is just background for our experiment that we do see uh, evidence of what could be thaw features, such as um, scalp terrain, uh, pingos, and polygons. So the questions we wanted to ask in our experiment are, can the methanogens um, that we work with survive these freeze-thaw cycles, or does the stress um, happen to kill them? Uh, do they go dormant, stuff like, um, something like that? And so we wanted to oops, see, initially look at um, just a variation in min and max temperature of 20 degrees, and ultimately get up to 80 degrees. Next, we wanted to know if our methanogens can actively grow during these freeze-thaw cycles. If the temperature does get above freezing, can they take that opportunity to um, grow? And finally, we wanted to look at the porosity of the soil, um, or the regolith we use in the experiments, to see if um, greater pore size can provide some sort of safe haven. So we um, conducted four experiments, and these are four different sets. In our first set, we looked at porosity, where we used um, just one of our organisms, Formicicum, in um, a standard anaerobic medium that we grow our methanogens in. And we had two subsets where we had a mixture of sand and gravel, and then just sand. And we had 10, milliliter 10 milliliters of medium in there. For sets two, three, and four, um, we were basically looking at how the amount of liquid medium and the amount of dry regolith uh, affected the survival or growth of our organisms. And so we used both Formicicum and Wolfii in each of these experiments, and then different amounts of sand and liquid medium. And so set two has five grams and 10 milliliters. Set three has 10 grams of sand, five milliliters of medium. And set four was our saturation experiment, where we only um, provided enough medium to saturate just above uh, the soil layer. So here are some of our results. First, I just want to explain what we um, would see, and then I'll explain what we did see. So um, here on the bottom is the length of the experiment in days. In order to measure growth of methanogens, since they're anaerobic, the easiest way is to measure the percent methane um, produced in the headspace of the test tube using a gas chromatograph. And so um, when our organisms are producing methane, that basically means that they're growing. And so if we did not take any, um, remove any methane to test, remove any air from the test tube to test it for methane, then um, this methane would be constant throughout the whole trial, because there's nowhere for that methane to go. But when we do take measurements, such as um, which all these data points are, then the methane decreases because we're removing that methane from the test tube. And so um, that this decrease here is due to sampling of the test tubes, and I just wanted to explain that. 
So um, in this graph, um, you can see here that these are our different cycles of freeze and thaw, I guess. First, we initially grew our organism at their growth temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius. Um, and then we subjected them to different cycles of 4 degrees Celsius, and the light blue is negative 15 degrees Celsius. And so um, what's interesting about this uh, set is that we do see an increase in methane, which means that methane was produced, because there's nowhere um, for that methane to go and then come back, basically, to uh, be removed when we're taking a sample. And the only way for it to be reproduced is for methanogens to produce it. And so that's an interesting um, aspect. And then there's just another one here where removing air from the sample didn't uh, decrease the methane. And this, um, again, was set one where we had sand and sand and gravel. And so it does seem that maybe porosity could play a role in providing a better growth environment. And so this is just something we're going to look into further. In set two, um, we had five grams of sand and 10 milliliters of medium. And we used our two organisms, Wolfii and Formicicum. And um, I just want to note that all of these graphs are on the same axis for comparison. They're all, they all go up to 45% um, percent methane. Um, but again, you can see here that we put them at their initial growth temperatures, which is 37 degrees for Formicicum and 55 degrees Celsius for Wolfii. And then we subjected them to alternating um, growth cycles. And so what we wanted to look at was what was happening here. Since we aren't seeing any real increase in percent methane, did our um, methanogens die? Are they going into dormancy? Are they still active? And so I performed a transfer just to new medium and at room temperature. And at least Wolfii is still viable. It rebounded, and the organisms are able to, again, produce more methane. And um, even with Formicicum, some methane was produced. And hopefully, I plan on continuing these experiments, and hopefully those numbers will go up. In set three, um, there was 10 grams of sand and 5 milliliters of medium. Uh, this basically just shows that the more liquid medium ultimately available um, provides greater growth. And in set four, which is just a saturation experiment, um, we had initially put the organisms directly into 4 degrees C. We didn't allow for that initial growth period at their growth temperature, and they didn't grow. So we put them then into their growth temperatures, and they were still viable after being um, exposed to 4 degrees Celsius. And so they um, did grow, and then um, were subjected to freeze-thaw cycles. Again, for at least Wolfii, we did see an increase in methane, which means that methane was being produced. Um, another interesting thing that we saw with our uh, experiment is this black band within um, the first, sometimes it's just below the surface, or sometimes it's actually at the surface. But um, we're not quite sure what it is right now. It could either be an interaction with the sodium sulfide that we add to our medium with the soil, or it could be some alteration of the environment by the microorganisms. Something that I looked at was the percent methane produced in each test tube. Um, and it does look like the um, tubes with more methane produced have wider bands. And so this is also something we're going to look into further. So in conclusion, um, our organism, Wolfii, is a very robust organism. It um, is a thermophile, but is, also, is able to rebound quickly from 4 degrees Celsius and negative 15 degrees Celsius. And it has shown um, production of methane at those temperatures as well. Um, another conclusion is that a greater amount of initial liquid medium promotes greater growth, such as when we use 10 milliliters medium and only half as much sand versus when we used a saturation experiment. And then finally, our discoloration of sand could indicate environmental alteration, but this is something we're going to look into further. For the future studies, we're going to continue these experiments and also repeat them just to make sure that those increases in methane um, are accurate and that 
you know, something wasn't going wrong. We also want to explore porosity further with different Mars simulant soils, such as JSC Mars 1 and the Mars Mojave simulant. And we're also going to further our temperature study by using a negative 80 degree freezer to more mimic those temperatures on Mars that we see. And so, how does this relate to Mars? Life is robust. I was also going to use the life finds a way, but um, I didn't. Um, but life's robust. So these are actually thermophiles that I'm working with, but at least Wolfie I shows promise of being able to rebound from freeze-thaw cycles. And if Mars was perhaps similar to Earth in the past, if there were dormant microorganisms, they could be existing in the subsurface. Thank you. So do we have any questions for Rebecca? Uh, thank you for your talk. I just want to make sure I understand correctly uh, one of your graphs. So um, on the graph you're showing set two, mm -hmm. for example, I think you should, I've seen it. Yeah. So you're saying so the, so we're in the first red box where you mm -hmm. see a methane increase, that's at minus 15 degrees C. So yes. you're sampling from the headspace, but at this temperature your medium is, is frozen, I believe, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so when you start at the end of the four degree experiment, you take a, a time measurement and you have a, a concentration of methane and then after a few few days you take it after a few days at minus 15 and you see an increase in methane. Uh, so it mean like, so the methane would have diffused through the ice and go into the headspace vial and that's what you measure, is that correct? Or do you melt your no, sample before? Um, they, when we do take measurements, they, we are taking the measurements at room temperature, so it's possible that there's some melting, but they're basically still frozen when we're taking our measurements. Um, we're also interested in why this is occurring. We looked at methane solubility in um, liquid water and frozen water, and it's, it has nothing to do with solubility because solubility is very low, but we're interested in this as well, and it's something that warrants further investigation. So this is also something that's seen in the field in permafrost during the onset of freezing. You get this freeze expulsion mm -hmm. of methane from the water phase, and it gets pumped out. Mm -hmm. So it's the onset of winter comes on, you get these enormous bursts of methane, which is where the majority in some places of uh, methane flux comes from. So I'm, I was worried about the same thing. I think what's happening is that you're freezing your solution, you're expelling all your methane out there, so it's not active production. Okay. You're expelling the production that you've made during the 4C times, okay. and then you're dropping back down again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that is, um, oops, see, that's both very good points. That's something we would expect as well, is methane was being produced um, earlier, either sorry, either um, during the growth phase or at 4 degrees C if it was in the soil or um, in the ice and then it was released later. Maybe we can have one more question for Rebecca if there's one. Uh, can you comment on the slope of your, I mean, it, does that mean anything, the fact that they have different um, Basically, Wolfie Eye is just a more robust grower in itself. It's more robust organism. It, in various um, environments, it just shows better growth and survivability. And so I think that's the difference between Wolfie Eye and Formicicum. Oh, yes, that also, I don't know. I mean, this is, these are both very, um, this, these experiments are all very preliminary and this is just, We've only looked at how much percent methane was produced over the time period, and now we have to go back and look at everything else and see why this is happening. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs>